Right, I'm here today at Nunnery Stud in Thetford, Norfolk. It's the headquarters of Shadwell's breeding empire. And I'm here with my old colleague from the Racing Post and now Shadwell nominations and marketing manager, Tom Pennington. Yeah, How are you, Tom? Very good. This takes me back to um, when you interviewed me. Yes. Very formal. <laughs> yeah, you're a lot more professional these days. So. <laughs> yes. um, so you're marketing manager, so um, give us some spiel about Muhara, who has his first two-year-old runners, stands here obviously, champion sprinter, and there's lots to look forward to in his freshman season. Yeah, um, a hugely exciting year um, for everyone involved here at Shapwell. Uh, he's got 105, roughly 105 two-year-olds um, due to hit the track this year, um, obviously covered a Stellar Book of Mares in 2016, brimming full of quality, numbered 129, um, of which 70 plus were black type winners or producers, um, 31 of those were group winners and obviously plenty of group one winners, including the likes of Alexander Goldrun, Izzy Top, uh, we sent Gennati, Sheikh Hamdan obviously has been very keen to support the horse um, all the way through, sent 11 again this year and there were plenty of group one producing mares as well, um, the likes of Queen of the Fairies, uh, Prudenzia and Twilight Mistress. So yeah, we, we were expecting big things this year. Um, and the Muha first yearlings last year sold very well and the breeders were well, well rewarded um, because you actually priced them very competitively from the outset and ever since. Yeah, um, yeah, 30,000 pounds in year one um, and he's full again this year, he covered 130 mares. And I think for a stallion to be full for the first four years at Stud, and we haven't had to deviate at all on that price. We haven't had to deal. I think it's exceptional, um, and testament to the to the great job the guys did here in year one. I think some people thought he was relatively inexpensive, almost too cheap, but the fact we haven't had to drop that price, that's exactly how we wanted it to play out. Yeah, and there were some breeders in particular who really. Um, got behind him in that first year. Um, I'm thinking Monso in particular. Yeah, they would have sent about half a dozen mares in, well, on their own and in partnership with other organisations. Um, yeah, they were they were very big supporters, and I, th I hope they feel they were well rewarded last year at the sales in Arcana. Yeah, including their queen Prudencia, so that'd yeah. be one of the many Muharas to look forward to. Um, and at the recent breeze ups, they were popular. The Muharas. Yeah, very much so. Um, they're very popular, especially in France at the weekend, where he had a couple of fillies uh, sell for 280 grand and 300 grand respectively. Yeah, they proved very popular. As you know, the vibe surrounding them as foals was phenomenal, and that um, transferred through to the yearling sales. Which I would be lying if you, I'd be lying if I said I wouldn't have expected what happened last year. You know, he was leading first season no. sire at both Tats Book One, the Goss Orb yearling sale, and he's obviously leading European based sire at Arcana, but we were expecting that. And to have 28 six-figure, or 28 yearlings make six figures or more was exceptional. And the high price of 925,000 guineas for a nice half-sister to Fairyland. So go on then, lay it on the line. How many winners do you think he will have by November, December? Or how many do you want him to have? Um, obviously you'd like to him to be in, in double digits. Um, it's hard to quantify what we expect numerically I think um, the six furlong maiden novice races have really been to step up a gear now and I'm expecting to see a nice steady flow of horses come out and I think from the middle of summer it'd be nice to have a steady flow of winners with a few stakes horses thrown in um, and it'd be nice to have some Maharas with classic aspirations for 2020 that's the dream a lot of people are questioning why he hasn't had any winners but you know Kingman hadn't had a winner this time last year. I think Calix was his first winner on the 9th of June, so we're certainly not worried. And I think that the, the runners will start to flow now. Um, Archie Watson's a big fan of the, the size. He's got a couple entered up at the weekend. Clive Cox has got a nice filly entered early next week. And Wesley Ward has a very nice filly in the States um, called the Americana, who Kerry Radcliffe bought uh, Dover for 250 grand. Unfortunately, due to the inclement weather, she couldn't make her debut last week. But I hear they're trying to get a run to for a possible tilt at Royal Ascot, which, which is fantastic. That's the sort of horse we want. But we didn't expect too many pre-Ascot juveniles. You know, no. if we can get one or two, that'd be fantastic. But I think sort of middle of summer onwards is where we're looking. Yeah. And then last year's freshman seat sire for you was Mukadram. Yeah. He's developing as quite a good value option, do you think? I think very much so. He's sort of, 
it doesn't make me look like doing my job, but he's sort of flying under the radar at the moment. He had a fantastic first season, as you say, 13 individual first crop winners, two stake sources, a bit special America, who looked very exciting, um, and Gloves Lynch of Gordon Elliott's, and he's just kept going again this year. He's one short of that magic 20 individual first crop winners, and plenty of horses to look forward to, including uh, Jabath, uh, and William Haggis has got a very nice three-year-old destination who looked very exciting actually when winning his maiden last week up at Weatherby. So there's plenty to look forward to and I think the winners will start to flow this year. And again, he's got another nice crop of 85 two-year-olds. Lots to come. And his sire Shamadal is in good form obviously because um, he yeah. had the French 1000 Guineas winner there and he's Scardu looks a promising prospect. Exactly, so. and with Shamadal, breeders struggling to get into Shamadal these days. It's, it's nice to have an, an alternative option for breeders. Yeah. Um, where else on the Nunnery Stud roster? You launched two new names this year. Yeah. The Sprinter, Tazlitz, and then the middle distance horse, Poet's Word. Yeah. So how did they go down? Um, as we'd envisaged, Tazlitz proved very popular. Um, multiple stakes winning son of Showcasing, who is arguably, along with Kingman, one of the most exciting young stallions in Europe. So he's gone down very well with breeders, um, competitively priced also at £6,000. He's covered a full book of mares, 120. So he's, he's done very well. Poet's word's been it's been tough, uh, as you know, and it's been well documented. The desire and demand for middle distance horses among breeders isn't as strong as it once was, which is a great shame. As you saw today, he's a gorgeous looking horse with lots of quality. Um, and it's been tough. Breeders now want to breed for the sales ring. They're not looking to breed for the race course. And, and we felt those effects. Uh, and, and considering what he achieved on the race course and how well priced he is, it's, it's disappointing, but we'll keep persevering with him. It does seem, doesn't it, like breeders are looking a gift horse in the mouth because there's a horse with a huge rating mm. at a really small fee. It's scary. It's, it's scary to think that at the height of the summer last year, there was only one horse in the world rated higher than him, and that was, that was Winx. Um, but as I said, I'm sure he'll get good looking stock, and those owner breeders that have used him, I, I think, will be. Um, well rewarded in the sales ring because if they look anything like him they'll be uh, they'll be well away and then last but certainly not least the elder statesman of the nunnery stud ranks Naya. yes what's he up to these days uh turned 21 this year doesn't act doesn't act his age as you saw earlier on still going strong fertility's extremely high he'll cover his 25 30 mares a season and as long as he's happy and healthy we'll continue to do so